Hello, this is Shesha Chalam from Ashwag at Mysore. Yesterday I had uh, posted a video on uh, disturbed married life uh, on because of the influence of the 8th Lord and its placement. Today I am trying to explain the 8th house and its relevance, its importance with regard to the marriage. There are many variations in this particular uh, you know, topic and many videos can be done. So I will be trying to give you in detail the uh, perspective of different angles and how to verify whether this is the particular planet and this is the particular house and which is actually having an emphasis on married life. This I will come and reach uh, after uh, several number of videos. Today let us stick on to one only one house that is the 8th house of the three Thikstanas, 6th, 8th and the 12th, the most important house for continuance of married life is the 12th house which I have already spoken about which I will once again give some examples and go into detail. But the second most important is the 8th house. This is in the decreasing order. It's always like this. The 12th is the most important. See, 8th is the second important. 6th is the third important. And why they are important, I'll tell you one by one. The 8th house represents our desires. So yesterday I wrote one sentence that the 8th Lord signifies or, or indicates the motivation uh, of achieving desires of a particular native. So, uh, what is that desire? How is that desire to be measured? And why is that that the desire actually becomes an impediment or an hurdle, you know, to the marriage? So, let's go into it planet by planet. So, we all know that sun is the, see, uh, first one thing, let me first explain one thing. Whenever a planet is placed in the 8th house, the innate characteristics of the planet with regard to the desires of the person gets enhanced. Like for example, the most materialistic, the most, you know, uh, earthly, what we call as uh, physical characters of the planet gets enhanced. I'll give you an example for planet to planet. Sun is ego. Ego is the most negative character of sun. Atma, Atma Bhala, Atma Sakshat Khara. They are all very good words which actually gives us uh, progressive positivity. Atma, soul. Atma Bhala, confidence. Atma Sakshat Khara, self-realization. These are also of sun only. But when sun is placed in the 8th house, all these three are kept aside and the most important character of sun, that is the ego, becomes dominating. It dominates the chart. So when there is ego which is dominating the chart in the 8th house, until and unless that is satisfied, the immediate house which is next to it, that is the seventh house, will suffer. Okay? So, sun is for ego, pride, satisfaction, and that is the respect. You know, people have to acknowledge that native. People have to respect that native. People have to identify the native in all the social gatherings. And only then does that person feel happy. And the same thing will have to happen in marriage also. So, let me go to the next planet. The next planet is moon. Very emotional. See now, the negative, most negative part of moon is going into depression. This is the most negative part. There is no other negative part. The next negative part is lunacy. You know, going, becoming mad. So, I am not talking about mad people now. I am talking about people who can you know, are in the normal society and they act that they are normal. You know, most of us are not normal. We all have one or the other defects, but we, when we are in the social forum or in the social uh, gathering, we act as we are normal. That is, 
because of the moral requirements of the uh, society. So we are into the brackets of the social ethics. So we we are as though that we are the most you know decent people, modified people, most modest people in the society. That's what we act. We all act. I act. You act. Everybody acts. So let us not now go into the bare you know the realities of uh, the eighth house. It actually shows off everything what is bare. The person who has a moon in the eighth house will go through you know swings of depression you know mood swings he or she will simply fall to the you know uh, bottom the surface and suddenly out of nowhere they will get elevated and they go up very high so these mood swings are of very tough you know to handle in a marriage you can understand marriage needs stability needs patience needs understanding needs sharing needs caring so moon does care i'm not telling that moon does not but when it goes to the eighth house it makes the person have having too much of emotional you know fluctuations flexibility is good fluctuations are not so that's why the desire that is which comes out of the eighth house is very important and yesterday i was talking about the eighth lord and its motivational uh, desires of achievement where it is placed and all those things we will talk about the placement of eighth lord in all the houses in the coming uh, months i will do another video on uh, planetary placements like the seventh lord in different houses eighth lord in different houses and etc so let me finish this because it's a huge thing so sun and i finished moon i am telling you only one point for each you know i am giving you one pointer only because uh, learning one single point when we had we had been learning astrology we would go to lot number of gurujis we would go to their houses we would sit with our teachers and spend months together for one single thumb rule one single point if we understood one point we would have we were elated that we got something new so please take this seriously and people who are studying astrology should take up every individual point and make note of it and test it and only then go ahead okay the third planet is mars the most you know innate and deadly character of mars is immediate reaction spontaneous reaction anger you know spontaneous aggression suddenly doing something out of nowhere so these people land up in court in unnecessary fights you know litigations it's all because of the you know that one small moment where they could not handle their patience and this is a very important point for marriage so if you lose patience where is the marriage so that means that is why kujavala was not considered when it is in the 8th house and it was considered as kuja dosha or manglik dosha that is why it was considered if a person with a manglik dosha in the 8th house from the ascendant i am talking only from the ascendant now because didvadasha tat chatus saptashtama this is what has been referred in our earlier texts didvadasha it's not in the oldest texts Manglik dosh has not been even uh, cited, even Brahma Prasha or Shastra. But in the recent years, let's say the recent years are around two thousand years old from now. So we still have to give some weightage because those people were all real good uh, astrologers. So Dvidva Dasha two twelve, Chatushta four, Sapta seven, and Ashtama eight. So two twelve four seven eight from Lagna or Chandra. gives rise to manglik dosh this is what it is but each and every placement the second the 12th the 7th the 8th and the 4th have different perspective different influence on the chart please do not take it as the same thing simply draw a line and spoil somebody's uh, you know married life because you will tell that he is manglik i am not and that's why it's happening that's not happening because of that it's happening because of something else so we need to see the chart so now here 8th house mars 
the person has to be counseled person has to be subjected to you know uh, learnings of yoga meditation pranayama so learn he has to be subjected to training he has to be you know uh, counseled into the training convince that this is required for you and because of that if he does that then he can overcome all these uh, you know sudden reactions so let us go to the fourth planet this is the most important planet in the eighth house which is the worst placement as per me mercury childishness mischievousness is one of the most strongest characters of mercury it makes the you know a party live you know a group will become lively they are young they have beautiful aspirations and they think out of the box so all that is fine but what is mercury when it is in the eighth house it is he is now not mischievous he tries to do things which are not required you know experimentation when he was young he was experimenting with something when he was an adolescent he was experimenting with his own body when he becomes <clears throat> you know gets into marriage he unnecessarily experiments with marriage this is not a good placement for mercury i give a thumbs down for this a very bad placement uh, in the chart and if this does not have you know good uh, aspect or conjunction then mercury will make a person think you know uh, out of the ethics he may cross the lines in thinking he may not have the strength to do it because mercury is a fear some uh, you know fearful planet it fears a lot but the mind will always be you know crookedly going into things which are not good for married life so so mercury in the eighth house is this it unnecessarily subjects a person into uh, thinking too many things like suddenly you know continuously watching porn going into it deep into it getting addicted not only porn anything else getting addicted is a dangerous thing and mercury in the eighth house can make a person get addicted very fast into all this nonsense so until unless i told you there should be some cancellations so we need to see the chart fully i am only giving you the pure characteristics of the placement after mercury it is jupiter you know the most negative character of jupiter is to try to do things big you have it or not if you have capable or not you know uh, there be there is a there is a saying in our uh, local language in kannada hottege hittilla andro juttige malge hu means hottege hittilla means when the person is hungry he doesn't have even food to eat but his wife wants mogra in her hair you know that is the that is the saying you know you should understand the madness she is bent on that every day i need mogra in my hair you know that jasmine in my hair it's very costly they they are some they are hungry they don't have food to eat so this applies when jupiter sits in the eighth house these people will go out of their way and concentrate only on achievement 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 and achievement they are always professionally oriented family life will become not even second place it will be somewhere in the fourth or the fifth place why because they first want to have a beautiful status in professional life they want success in their life they want money in their life they want social status by building home cars you know big bungalows and after that they if they have time and if they can spare it they will give it to their wife or husband whatever whoever it is so jupiter in the eighth house is once again a big no if once again it has not been stabilized by a saturn a jupiter and a saturn in the eighth house will cool down you know we will call upashama it's as good as dousing the fire jupiter is it suddenly becomes invigorated and uh, fire is lit when it is in the eighth house it makes the man mad or a woman mad and by unnecessarily making you know them believe in too much of dreams 
do this, do that, I want to become that, I want to become this and finally what? Nothing. And they will get dejected and you know what nonsense dejected people do nowadays, which is actually against the law in India. So, next is at, uh, next is uh, Venus. Venus in the 8th house. You know, the, the negative character of Venus is that they get attracted to the opposite gender more than required. I am telling you the basal needs are the basic characteristics. I am not talking about philosophy. I am not talking about whether the person can become a writer, singer, dancer or a performer and do something great in life. I am not talking about that at all. I am just talking about the basic negative quality of a planet which actually gets enhanced when it is posited to the 8th house. Now, the physical need will get, you know, too much of importance when it is in the 8th house. And until or unless there are once again uh, planets which are not, you know, benefic planets which are able to control it, the person will have tendencies to go to the second marriage. So that is, I am talking only about the first marriage today. The 8th lord and the 8th house is a badaka for the first marriage. That is what is my part. Saturn in the 8th house. This is the only planet which does not spoil the marriage, but it may not, you know, it puts off the spark in the married life. It puts off the spark. Uh, Saturn, the Karaka for the 8th house is for only for Ayu. It is not for a happy married life. Once again, when Saturn is in the 8th house, what it might do is, it enhances one negative quality of Saturn is silence, going into cold war. So, a little bit of rift, little rift. If the husband has the Saturn in the chart, he will never talk to his wife for a year. He will have all the patience, the you know, the commitment and the perseverance for not talking to her. I don't know from where they get that strength of being silent. I have seen families, I have spoken to people who have been staying in the same house in different rooms for years after marriage and nobody else knew this. It was a silent arrangement, even the husband and the wife both did not want this marriage but they did not want to disclose this because of the social pressure. So they stayed in the same house in different rooms and they played a good host when people came to their house. That's all because of Saturn. Saturn in the 8th house is not a good placement. So, I have not given a green tick to any of the planets. Forget about Rahu and Keta, I am not considering them, uh, you know, in the 8th house at all. If you put them in the 8th house, things go uh, berserk actually. Uh, like a person can become a widower or a widow or uh, negativities in married life, fighting, court, you know, all unnecessary nonsense might happen. I am not telling it will happen, it might happen. But the first few things which I have told you for these seven planets is of utmost importance because this will have a role to play in each and every chart. So please check your chart and see whether there are other negative or positive placements which are actually nullifying this particular placement because don't simply go by one rule and say that you have told this sir, that's why it's happening. Oh my God, my marriage is going to break. It will not break. Don't simply take, you know, a rule by only its face value. Go into it in depth, understand and then come and say that yes, this might happen. The tendency is there. Okay, thank you very much for today's uh, Moreover, this is not the right time to analyze for the students. Correct, correct. See, I am now still in the basics. I am still in the basics. I have not yet done how to calculate Lagna. I have not yet gone into the other Dasha systems. So many things, Shatbala. I have not yet gone into the Muharta. Nothing I have taught still. We are still in the, you know, infant stage of astrology. The actual analysis of the charts. I am just providing all this because uh, you know there should be, it's, it's like we were eating milk and rice 
continuously for so many days and it, it there was you know it would be bland so this is why i am giving it so that let let there be some spice into another thing yeah that when the planets on retro again the results will be different yeah yeah the <laughs> ma'am is very clearly giving this one particular point please do not apply whatever i have said for placement of planets and being retrograde in the eighth house no this is only for normal planets retrogression will have extreme effects and i will discuss about them in the later classes thank you very much for today's class